This is the Ankermake M5, an i3 style 3D printer, the likes of which you've never seen. With hold on a second. That's better. This is the Ankermake M5, an i3 style 3D printer, the likes of which you've never seen. With fast print speeds and a sexy design, plus the promise of AI error detection, is it the machine to get? Or is it all just hype? We'll discuss it all in this detailed review here on Maker's Muse. Let's get started. Almost a year ago, I made a video on the Ankermake M5, which was launched on Kickstarter. In that video, I stated that I don't usually discuss Kickstarter campaigns because I don't agree with large companies using the platform to launch their new products. But I found it so refreshing compared to the glut of Ender 3 clones fighting the market. With its promised speed and features, it looked so impressive on paper that I said it should terrify existing 3D printing manufacturers. Well, here I have a full production model of the M5 sent to me by Ankermake for review, and I've been testing it thoroughly. It's been interesting. The M5 comes in a high quality retail ready box and is securely packed with the gantry and base in two separate assemblies, which need to be bolted together by the user. In the box was one tiny spool of black PLA, two one kilo spools, of white PLA plus and some spare parts, as well as a really nice toolkit. One of the best I've ever seen to come with a 3D printer, honestly. The first thing that strikes you when assembling the M5 is that it's actually pretty chunky. It's larger than you'd expect and built like a tank, especially the base, which is one solid die cast part. I just had to take a closer look and it's a thing of beauty. Hey, I'm an industrial designer at heart. Get off my case. But seriously, I've never seen another 3D printing company manage to pull off something like this. And it's this part as well as small details such as the use of vibration resistant bolts, which speaks volumes about the company's manufacturing experience and capabilities. Being such a chunky bit of kit, you definitely want to follow the instructions and use some of the packaging foam to prop the gantry on its side in place so you can safely secure the two parts together. And from there you attach the spool holder and PTFE filament guide and well, that's about it. The Ankermake M5 is a good looking machine with that all too familiar bed slinger 3D printer design and a fairly standard print volume of 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters, more than big enough for most projects. Despite looking quite futuristic, it's actually running V-slot extrusion and V-rollers for the X and Y axes. And they've used this really unusual linear bushing slide thing for Z. At around $800 US, it's not the most expensive 3D printer on the market, but it's certainly not the cheapest and I would have liked to see linear rails used here, at least for the x-axis. While the design may look like a Bowden setup, this housing actually hides a compact direct drive extruder and hot end with a side piece simply holding the filament runout sensor. This arrangement means you'll waste 30 centimeters or so of filament when it runs out, but it will actually let you safely and easily retract the filament when it runs out and change over instead of getting stuck behind the filament runout sensor like so many other 3D printers. Another unusual take is this full color touch LCD mounted onto the gantry itself, which means it moves up with the 3D print as it progresses instead of being mounted to the frame elsewhere. I'd imagine this adds a little bit of extra mass that could become an issue if you're printing with Z-Hop enabled, but otherwise my main issue with it is the fact it's just facing straight ahead, which makes using the printer when it's on a table a little bit awkward. I feel that putting it at a slight like 30 degree angle or something would have made interacting with the screen a heck of a lot easier. The heated print bed comes fitted with a removable magnetic PEI spring steel print surface, which has pretty much been the go-to standard print surface since the Prusa Mark III debuted back in 2018, and it's really easy to use. But Anchormake haven't included any guides, which means it's a bit tricky to put back and position accurately. Just some guides at the back to let you square it up would have been an easy quality of life improvement here. In terms of interactivity, the familiar SD card has been replaced with a USB-C port for external storage media, a futuristic but annoying choice in my opinion, but it's not a big deal because most people will choose to connect to this machine wirelessly through, yep, you guessed it, its own app. Using the excitedly named Ankermake app, you can set up the 3D printer on your own network, which much like Bamboo Lab's Bamboo Handy, allows you to monitor prints remotely through the built-in camera, send prints remotely, as well as start and stop prints and change a few parameters on the printer while it's printing. The app's still in early development, but I like that Anchor Make appears to be heavily focused on community rather than simply controlling the 3D printer with links to their various communities, Discord and such, and a section of pre-sliced models available right there in the app. You just load it up, send it to the machine, and it starts printing. And for newbies, I can see this actually being really attractive 
if they continue to add fun and interesting models regularly. And I didn't see any obviously stolen models as well, which is good and I hope it stays that way. But you may be wondering, how do you set nozzle height and bed level on the Anchor Make M5? Well, you don't. This machine does it all on its own using a strain gauge built into the hot end and seven point automatic bed leveling, which appears to be more than enough for a reliable first layer. It does seem to be a little bit close from the factory. I reckon they've scooched it closer just to be safe, but all prints so far have released easily enough from the textured PI print surface once they cool down without damaging it. And I've had no issues with print adhesion. All I do is just wipe it clean with isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel every couple of prints. And to further the efforts of making this printer easy to use and part of their own cloud ecosystem, Anchormate have made their own slicer, also called Anchor Make. And I'm really sorry, but it's kind of not that great. Don't get me wrong, it works, and it's actually quite intuitive, but it's limited in how much control you have over preparing the prints for slicing, and it has some weird UI quirks. I run a super ultra wide screen, which is like two white screens glued together, and I literally can't snap it correctly to one half of the screen like I do with every other app I use. It just doesn't work for some reason. You can scale it, but you can't snap it. And I've actually only ever seen this behavior once before, and that was with Chi2Box, which is a slicer for resin 3D printing. Under the hood, I think it's using Cura Engine for slicing, although it does attribute slicer as well. And for most simple models, you can honestly just leave it in easy mode, but in expert mode, it will reveal a ton of settings that will overwhelm even the most experienced 3D printer user. So be warned if you wanna dive into that. The prints it produces, again, aren't bad, but coming from Prusa Slicer, I really miss the ability to easily customize support structures, do variable layer heights, and position my seams where I wanted them. For example, it was impossible to configure support structures the way I wanted for this spiral wheel. It just ended up with this mess of support and this edge that just is pointless in my opinion. I couldn't configure it how I wanted in their slicer but I can configure it how I want in Prusa Slicer, which is good because in the latest 2.6 alpha release, Anchor Make M5 profiles are now available. Their provided profiles are pretty good, but I also tried my hand at making my own with personal preferences like cubic infill and a slower external perimeter. The Anchor Make M5 slices into this weird a code format, which is just an archive containing the G code file and what I presume is their AI detection information for the print. So if you want to slice in Prusa Slicer, but send to the printer wirelessly, you need to use their software, their slicer, to load your G-code from Prusa Slicer, and then from there, send it wirelessly to the printer. It's a little bit convoluted, but in my opinion, it's a small price to pay for getting a much more powerful slicing environment. And you can also use Cura as well, if that's more your thing. So I think it's about time to show you some of my favorite prints of the Anchor Make M5. I printed quite a few things on the Anchor Make M5 during testing, but I'm gonna focus on the files that I think are most important, starting with this Autodesk test print, this came loaded on the internal storage in the 3D printer and it's a very brave file to have as your demo file. This print looks awesome. It printed really, really fast. You can see in the footage, it's shaking the table that's sitting on, it's just a standing desk. But again, there's a lot of moving mass going around and the overhangs are great. The bridging is awesome. The finish is actually really nice in their little tiny supplied roll of black PLA plus. The only area of improvement is the spires have a bit of wispy stringiness on them, but that's the only area that could be slightly improved. This is the Maker's Muse clearance castle. And when this was printed, initially the tower was actually stuck and the portcullis was actually stuck too. Now it was actually stuck in just tiny little areas at the top and bottom where the solid infill had slightly bulged out. And I think that's because in their slicer, which was a sliced in, I think it's because linear advance wasn't enabled and at the higher speeds, there's a little bit of bulging in the corners. I did then enable it for future prints which does result in slightly rounded corners and a little bit more ghosting at those corners I find, but it turns you get better clearances as a result. But this did free up quite easily and it's hard to see in their white PLA plus, but the, the straw bridge looks great with the bridging. Uh, the tower can indeed twist like so, and the portcullis did free up quite easily. It's just stuck again at that top little bit there. One really delicate model I wanted to try is this tiny little egg tray for wingspan eggs, I'll put the, the name of the creator here. And this had a little bit of under extrusion or extrusion uh, reliability issues in some of the points where extrusion would just sort of randomly under extrude sometimes. And with this clearance and tolerance gauge, it's actually very evident in the top. There's some strange under extrusion issues going on in certain areas. And this print actually jammed up. Um, again, this was before I enabled any linear advance. So it goes down to 0.4. 
and point three is jammed. And I can kind of see at the bottom that it's jamming up where the text is, where it says unlock. And that's probably because it's bulging out a little bit too much, but it does those really sharp angular changes, and that's enough to bind it up. Something else to be aware of is how this printer handles filament, especially when you're printing with these new fancy jewel or tri-colored shiny silk PLAs. So this is a Benchy that's been printed with a jewel color silk PLA. And you can actually see the filament's not staying completely straight. It's coming through. It's actually sort of spinning almost and creating this not very nice finish. Usually when you print these filaments, it's very clear that one side's one color and one side's the other color. But the filament's kind of been spinning here on the print as it's been going through the extruder. And that's resulting in this sort of mix of the two different silk colors. But the print itself is very clean. There's a little bit of cooling issues under here. Um, and looking at the hot end, uh, although it's very loud when it's printing, it's only got two fairly small squirrel cage fans pointing at the cooling ducts. That really loud fan you hear is actually just cooling the heat break. It's actually not cooling the print itself. And again, you see a little bit of that ghosting here that can be exhibited sometimes on the print, but in the latest firmware update, it seems to have cleared that up quite a bit. But by far my favorite print of this machine so far has been this Gayer Anderson Cat in pink polyalchemy silk PLA. And it is so pretty. <laughs> it printed fast as well. And the finish is so nice. It's almost like translucent in its shine. You can't even really see the layer lines. Printed at 0.15. A size distant Prusa slicer. And the only downside is I didn't tell it where to put the seam. So you can see the seam goes through the little uh, detail at the front where I could have told it using seam painting to go elsewhere. This is printed with organic supports out of Prusa slicers 2.6 alpha. And yeah, I'm very, very happy with this. Although I'd say this was early on in my profile creation in Prusa Slicer, and I think I didn't have the retraction settings quite right. So some of the organic supports did start to under extrude quite severely, which means that they weren't super supportive when it got to the top of the head. But that was my settings. I changed them after this and I didn't get any of that showing up for future prints. And of course I had to test out a file in the app. So this is the little print in place Corgi that printed like this, it comes away from the print bed and it's got like a little bit of wiggle. Just look at that little tush. <laughs> Um, and I couldn't find this file anywhere else. I think it's been made for Ankermex specifically. I might be wrong, uh, but it actually printed great and it's designed to print with no support material. The line through it is where I actually turn the printer off and then turn it back on. So uh, power recovery does work. You just will result, it will result in an artifact as it always does, but that does work totally fine. And of course you have to finish up with the torture lattice cube, which completed, which I'm very, very happy with because so many printers lately have not been able to print this file. Again, it's hard to see with their white PLA and the bottom could be better in terms of cooling, but it still didn't fail. None of the arms broke. And as it got to the top, the, the print finish actually did improve quite a bit. So cooling could be better, but the fact this finished is a really, really good sign for when you want to print delicate prints. Like this screw here, which was printed in Prusa Slicer with my own profile, with snug supports that I could put exactly where I needed them, right at the bottom. They broke away beautifully. And then the rest was printed without support material. And that is a pretty clean result for such a delicate model. A little bit of cooling issue here, but really can you complain considering how steep these overhangs are on this print? Okay, yay or nay on the Anchor Make M5. Well, this may be Anchor Make's first 3D printer, but it's far from the parent company Anchor's first tech product. And that manufacturing experience really shows. It's beautifully built and looks the part too. It also comes pretty dang close to being the perfect first 3D printer for anyone who doesn't want to fuss with first layer height and manual bed leveling and tinkering and just want to print cool things, especially with the direction they're going in the app. But it's not perfect. It's small things mostly. For a start, it's super loud. This is just a trade-off for the high print speed because you need lots of cooling. And other rapid machines like the Bamboo Lab P1P are similarly loud, especially with their cooling fans. But there's just no way I could work in the same room as this machine going full tilt. The choice of a bed slinger with V rollers for such a fast machine is also pretty strange. And this whole five times faster thing they're promoting, five times faster compared to what? They seem to label that the one times faster is 50 millimeters per second and five times is 250 millimeters per second, but it doesn't take into account accelerations. And I did some tests with like an Ender 3 profile versus this machine. And when you do that, it looks like prints take about half the time of a standard Ender 3 profile. 
which is still really good, but it's a far cry from one fifth of the time that they seem to push really hard in their advertising. I also need to talk about the filament retract routine because it's currently pretty flawed. It simply slowly retracts the filament backwards, which can easily form a plug, which causes a jam in the PTFE tube. All it needs to do instead is extrude a bit of filament first before quickly pulling back and then withdrawing the filament to prevent that plug forming. Next firmware update, pretty please. And the next sticking point is this error detection with AI camera. It works, but it also doesn't work. Let me explain. Initially, this machine was sending tons of false alarms through the app to my phone as push notifications, which was really annoying and I disabled it. But with the latest recent update, it does enable AI monitoring of the G-code sliced from Prusa Slicer, Cura, or their own slicer. And it does this thing where it'll check the first layers by pulling the gantry up and then letting the camera look at the print bed to see if the first layer is correct. And this does work. I tested it with a bad first layer with filament just sort of on the print bed and it gave me a warning saying that the first layers were not correct. But after the print continued past these first few layers, it did nothing. It didn't detect anything. Nothing I could do would trigger the arrow detection. I tried covering the camera, I tried just chucking bits of filament onto the print volume, and I tried deliberately having prints that failed. Some error detection is better than nothing, I suppose, and maybe it'll get better in future, but considering how urgently Anchor Make seemed to want this video to go live, I have no idea. And then there's the cloud ecosystem aspect. Despite my reservations around cloud software and the app, along with proprietary parts and the unusual mechanical design choices, I do see this printer as being a pretty solid first choice for beginners. Because if everything did go dark, you can still slice with other slices and you could load files via the USB-C storage medium into the top of the printer. So you can use this offline if you so needed to. But in terms of its price point, it's going head to head with a Bamboo Lab P1P. That machine may have the edge on print quality and print speed due to the Core XY design, but to get to that price point, Bamboo Lab had to strip everything back. It looks like an unfinished machine. This looks very polished. And I do like how Anchor Make is aiming the app at newbies, which I do hope continues to expand as time goes on. We've clearly entered the age of 3D printers that anyone can use, and I have high hopes that machines like this will continue to make that possible. If you'd like to check out the Anchor Make M5, you can find links in the description below, including my own custom Prusa Slicer profile. Full disclosure, Anchor Make sent me across the Anchor Make M5 free of charge for review and all opinions are my own. They did however mention that there's a sale going on currently and you can find information on that in the description. 